Good morning, brethren. Good morning also to our friends who join us week after week. Once again, it is our privilege that we can, with one another, even through the electronic media, receive the word of God. I trust that week by week, you are putting your trust, your confidence in God because he is our only help. I trust also that we are encouraging one another to put each other's confidence in God and that we all can be helpers of one another's joy, especially in this end time. Before we, I begin this morning's message, I will bow or I will kneel in prayer and I invite you to join me also in prayer asking that God's word will be truly a blessing to our hearts. Gracious Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy precious name. Once again, it is a wonderful privilege to bow before the throne of grace and to beseech thee through Jesus Christ, to call thee our Heavenly Father, and to thank you for your mercy stirs us, even in challenging times. As we bow this morning, forgive us our sins. Oh, how much we see our need of being constantly washed and cleansed from all stain and from all defilement. So wash us now, dear Father, as we petition unto thee and make us worthy to abide in thy presence this morning. Bless now your word to our hearts. Grant us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Indeed, you are our wisdom, our knowledge, and understanding. So grace our soul temples with your presence. Pour your Holy Spirit upon us. It is the Spirit's preparation that will see us through these challenging times. And we invite thee to be with us even now in our worship. Bless hearts as they receive this word. And truly, dear Heavenly Father, May Christ be seen, be known, be heard in our lives day by day. Hear us now from heaven, and as we wait on thee, may angels also encamp round about us, driving back evil forces, enabling us to receive and to understand your word. Hear us now, lift every burden, every care, every anxious thought. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray this morning. Amen. Our subject this morning is losing sight of Christ. Losing sight of Christ. Now, in our last session, we were looking at Psalm 121, David depending and trusting and looking to God as his only help. And we will begin with this passage of scripture once again this morning. Psalm chapter 1 to 1, coming from verse 1 again. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. But our focus now will be on verse 3. It says, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Anytime our feet move, and by feet it is here, our foot it is referring to our faith. You see, faith, we walk by faith. Faith is our footstep. Anytime our feet move, God is not the one responsible because the Bible clearly says, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. And therefore, when our, feet, when our foot move, our feet move, God is not the person or the being at fault. Moving on the feet, of the feet here means an unsure footing. It means a fall. An unsure footing is always movable. It will move and the house will fall down. Any building built on an unsure footing will fall. And therefore, 
David is here suggesting that our feet, our faith, be planted on a firm footing, not moving. You see, the fall refers to a lack of faith. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. An unsure footing will fall. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. And it says here, For we walk by faith and not by sight. So faith is our feet. And therefore, the slipping, the, the moving of the feet, has to do with our faith. And we are told that we walk by faith and not by, not by sight. But there became a point in time in David's life where his feet, where his faith began to slip. And this is why he can write and he can tell us that God will not suffer our foot to be moved. That God is not the one responsible when our feet slip, when our faith fails. So tired of being pursued by King Saul, David began to make some mistakes. Distress, perplexity, constant persecution almost hid God's face, his heavenly father's face from him. And so David sought help from Achish, the enemy, the Philistines. His feet or his faith began to slip. He was losing sight of Christ. His faith should have been focused on Christ and not on the prevailing circumstances. So what caused David's faith to slip? What caused his feet to move? What caused him to turn from trusting God and depending upon himself? Turn with me to Psalm chapter 73, familiar passage, Psalm chapter 73, and we will be looking at verse 1 to 3. Psalm 73, verse 1 to 3. What caused David's feet to slip? What caused his faith to fail? He says, truly God is good to Israel, even to such are of a clean heart. But as for me... My feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. What is it that David confessed that caused him to slip? What is it that caused him almost to completely fall? He said, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Envy. Envy is that which caused our faith to fail. Envy is that which caused us to lose sight of God. Envy is that which David confessed was the problem. He was looking from, he was not looking at God. He was looking to something else or he was looking somewhere else other than God. Envy, discontent. This is what God caused David to turn to his enemies for help. For help. Verse 4 of Psalm 73. For there are no bands in their death, referring to the wicked, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men are, as other men. Neither are they plague like other men. So David was here wondering, why am I the Lord's, the one who is the Lord's anointed? Why am I being plagued? Why am I being hunted down day after day? Why, why do I have to sleep in cave and always be on the lookout? And the wicked ones, they are comfortable. He could not understand that. Why? Because he turned his eyes from God. And he was focusing now on slave. Why are you leading me through troubled waters? Was the question. Verse 6. Their pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than, they have more than a heart could wish. They are corrupt 
and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out of them. And they say, How doth God know? And is their knowledge in the Mosai? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in, in riches. David was focusing, focusing on the ungodly, on the wicked, on the blessings they were receiving. But he was not realizing that even in his time of trouble, he too was receiving blessing. And many a times, we view things in the same light. Why are we meeting such hardships? And it seems as if there is no blessing that can be found in our experience. But brothers and sisters, friends and visitors, even in troublous times, we are being blessed. The very situations are working themselves out for our good, as we are told in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. All things work together for good for them that love the Lord. So David was discontented. He was not satisfied. Verily, he was saying that God seems to love the wicked better than the righteous. And many a times we accuse God the same way. We accuse God of blessing the wicked, prospering the wicked, while we ourselves are suffering. But even in Job's experience, even in Job's trial, the word recalls, recalls and records, in all this, Job sinned not, neither charged God foolishly. But David was here charging God. And we too are guilty of charging God, accusing him of blessing the wicked and forsaking the righteous. <clears throat> so envy and discontent causes our downfall. Envy and discontent causes us to lose sight of Christ. This envy and discontent, it builds a separation wall, a wall of partition blocking Christ from our view. In heaven, with Lucifer, this is where envy and discontent began. And he was successful in deceiving a third of the angels. They too lost sight of God, lost sight of their creator, by also cherishing envy and discontent. He came to this earth, fed the same envy and discontent to all four parents, who partook of it, and their footsteps fell also, their footsteps slipped, their faith faltered. And wherever envy and discontent is cherished, we will fall. We will lose our faith, we will lose sight of Christ. It is this that causes our downfall. But we are told in Psalm chapter 37, verse 1, Another familiar passage of scripture, turn with me there in your Bibles. Psalm chapter 37, verse 1. <clears throat> Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. David was fretting himself. He was worrying himself sick because of what evil people were doing and appeared apparently to prosper. And we are told not to fret ourselves concerning the wicked, what they are doing, what they have, or what they don't have. Our attention needs to be focused on Christ. So this is the problem with many Christians. This is why our faith fails. This is why we lack that courage and that fortitude all because of looking aside from Christ. Turn with me to St. Matthew chapter 7 and verse... St. Matthew chapter 8, sorry. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 27. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 8, verse 26. Matthew 8, 26. This is referring to the night on the lake when Jesus was in the boat with the disciples and the storm arose... And with all of the effort, they were trying to
to write out the storm, so to speak. Matthew 8, 26. And he saith unto them, Why are you so fearful, O ye of little faith? Now we are told by Jesus also that if we have as much faith as the grain of a mustard seed, that we will be able to, to move mountains. And somehow in our minds, we have always had the thought that faith as the grain of a mustard seed is small faith. But brothers and sisters, faith as the grain of a mustard seed is great faith because it is able to accomplish a work. But Jesus told his disciples, O ye of little faith. And in this context, little faith here really means no faith. They had no faith because he was in the boat with them. And they were fearful. Why are you so fearful? Why are you so concerned? Why are you fretting yourself, O ye of little faith? We need to have the presence of our Redeemer in focus. We need to have Christ in view. When we have Christ in our focus, when we have Christ in view, we have him with us. And therefore, through every situation, we will be able to come through because he is the one who will be bringing us through. Every failure on the part of the children of God is due to their lack of faith. When shadows come past the soul, when we want light and guidance, we must look up. There is light beyond the darkness. David ought not to have distrusted God for one moment. And we ought not to distrust God for one moment. He had cause for trusting in him. He was the Lord's anointed, and in the midst of danger, he had been protected by angels of God. He had been armed with courage to do the wonderful things, and he had but re if he had but removed his mind from the distressing situation in which he was placed, and had thought of God's power and majesty, he would have been at peace even in the midst of the shadows of death. He could with confidence have repeated the promise of the Lord. The mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Isaiah 54 verse 10. So David, instead of focusing on God, Realizing that he was being protected by, the, by angels, he was distracted and he lost his focus. Our focus needs to be on the Lord. Our focus needs to be in the Lord. Our feet, which is the footsteps of faith, should always lead to God. Our faith or our feet, because 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, we walk by faith and not by sight. Our feet, our faith should always lead us into the presence of God. Why? Because faith is a gift or the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Faith always leads to the presence of God, not away from God. And David being led away from God, that was not faith. That was failure. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Faith is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Faith leads to God, not away from God. Turn with me also to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, a passage that you know very well also. 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatsoever or whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So faith gives victory, never defeat. Faith gives success, never failure. 
so we can never fail in faith. There, needs, there is always success in faith. We can never be defeated through faith. Faith gives the victory as the passage of Scripture says. And it's important that we understand this because if there is not that faith which gives victory, if there is not, if, if there is not the experiencing of victory over every sin, over every defect, then can we call ourselves children of faith? No, my brothers and sisters, I don't think so. Whatsoever is born of God, it overcomes. And it says, this is how we overcome. The victory is given to our faith. It says, we overcome through faith. Faith overcomes the world. And therefore, children of faith are overcomers. Children of faith are successful. This is the victory, even our faith. So faith gives the victory. But what is faith? You may ask, it is that confidence, that reliance, that firm assurance depending upon the word of God, on the promises of God that he will make manifest, make known, or reveal his presence to us. I will repeat that again for emphasis on where I am going. What is faith? It is that assurance depending upon the word of God, on the promise of God, that he will make manifest or will make known or reveal his presence to us. Turn with me to St. John chapter 1 and verse 1. We use the saying that faith is depending upon the word of God and trusting on the word of God that the word of God do what it says it will do. And that is very true. But do we really understand the significance and the importance of what it means to trust in the word of God or to trust on the word of God? <clears throat> St. John 1, 1 to 4. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And this word refers to whom? Jesus Christ. So the word here is Jesus Christ. A faith is trusting in the word of God and depending upon the word of God, then we see from the Bible that faith is trusting in Jesus, depending on Jesus. And it is very, very important that we understand these small details in the word of God. It is very important that we understand them. In the beginning was the word, and therefore, if faith is trusting and depending upon the word, it really means trusting and depending upon God. Verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, him who? The word. The word manifested all things, bring all things into existence. All things were made by him, and without him, was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was what? The light of men. In him was life. The word was life. John chapter 6 and verse 63. Another passage that we are familiar with. In him was life, and the life was light. The word was light. St. John chapter 6 and verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The word is life. And therefore, when we are trusting upon the word, that is life. We are really trusting to Jesus because the book says, in him is life. And the life is light. It is the light of men. So our brothers and sisters, are you beginning to understand that trusting in the word of God is not, does not mean trusting in something that is abstract, something that you can't see, that you can't feel. 
It is verily trusting in Jesus, one who has life, one who is full of light. And why is life in him? Turn with me also now to Romans chapter 8, verse 2. You see, he was with the Father from the beginning, and that life which was with the Father, he partook of. Verily, it was his very life. For the law, Romans 8, 2, for the law of the spirit of life were in Christ Jesus. That is why in him was life, because the law of the spirit of life was in him. The very spirit, the very life of his father in him. The law of life, it was in him. And therefore in him was life, and that life was the light of men. So faith is trusting in Jesus in whom is life. And in whom is light. Turn with me also to 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Another familiar passage of scripture. 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Faith is not trusting in something that cannot be seen. It is not trusting in something, some airy fairy thing. It is trusting and depending on Jesus himself. And I will keep repeating that. Because we need not lose sight of Christ. And losing sight of Christ, this is how we fall. That which was from the beginning. 1 John, John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was what? The Word. This Word refers to whom? Jesus. And John here tells us in 1 John, that which was from the beginning, it is referring to the word, it is referring to Jesus Christ who was from the beginning. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the words of life. So when we are trusting in the word of God, we are trusting something tangible, trusting something that has life, trusting something that the disciples and other people touch and handle and saw. It says, of the word of life, referring to Jesus Christ. So when, again, I will repeat, when we are talking about faith, it's trusting in the word of God and depending upon the word of God. Again, I will say, faith is trusting in Jesus, depending on Jesus, that at the appointed time, he will manifest himself. He will make his presence known unto us. Verse 2 of First John chapter 2. For the life was manifested, or the word the life that was in the word, John 6, 63. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The life was manifested, John says, and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard and declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So John is here declaring the same word that they saw and touch and handle and see. He says that same word we declare unto you that, you all, that your joy may also be full. In other words, that we can rejoice as they rejoice then. First Peter, chap, Second Peter chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 1, and verse 19. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. Faith is not trusting in any eerie, fiery thing. It is trusting verily in the word of God. First Peter, sorry, first Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. First Peter, I missed that passage there. Anyhow, we'll go on. So faith is trusting in the word of God. 
that he will make manifest or make known or reveal his presence. Turn with me now to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 15. We will see something there. Daniel chapter 3, verse 15. And we'll be focusing on the last half of the verse. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 15. And this is, we know the story of the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. Daniel 3, 15, I'll, begin, I'll read the whole verse, but I'll focus on the latter part. Now, if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbuck, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye shall fall down and worship the image which I have made. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And this is my focus now, the last three verses. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? This was the question asked by King Nebuchadnezzar. Who is that God that is able to deliver you out of my hand? You know something? Nebuchadnezzar was challenging God. Never challenged Jehovah. He was challenging Jehovah. Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, or as God sees fit, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, as, well, as it, what best suits his purpose, they are saying, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I read that for a particular reason. I'll go back to my definition that faith is that confidence, that reliance, it is that firm assurance depending upon the word of God, which is Jesus himself, and on the promises of God, Christ again, that he will make manifest or make known or reveal his presence to us. Look at the faith of these boys. Verse 24 of Daniel chapter 3. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished. And rose up in haste, that this is after they were cast into the burning fires, burning fiery furnace. And he spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto him, True or king? He answered and said, verse 25, Lo, I see four men loose. Walking in the midst of the fire, they have no hurt. And the fourth, and the form of the fourth, is like the Son of Man. Brothers and sisters, do you see that faith manifested the presence of God, make known the presence of God in the midst of the fiery furnace to these three young men, to Nebuchadnezzar, and to all of those princes and rulers who were looking there, who are looking on there back then. Faith is dependent on my, upon the word of God and on the promise of God that he will manifest or make known his presence to us. Faith reveals or brings the very presence of God near to us. Turn with me also to St. John chapter 14. John chapter 14 and verse 21. John chapter 14 and verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. Note the other phrase. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. God desires to manifest himself to us. 
But that manifestation can come only through faith. That is, depending on Jesus, depending upon his words, the words that are spirit and life, depending on his promises. So again, when we begin to repeat that definition of faith is trusting in the word of God and depending on the word of God, we are not talking about letters at the alphabet put together to form words, brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors. It is talking about depending upon Jesus, the very word of God, depending upon Jesus who was from the beginning because the word was from the beginning. John chapter 5 and verse 39. St. John chapter 5 and verse 39. Another important passage of scripture. John 5, 39. <clears throat> search the scriptures, he told the Pharisees. You search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. Eternal life is not in the words or the letters, brothers and sisters. It is in the word of God. Yes, this is the word of God, but this word of God, these letters, they point to the word of God, Jesus Christ himself, because Jesus says in the final verse, and they are they which testify of me. These are they which testify of him. So when we search the scriptures, and we are depending upon the scriptures, the scriptures leads us to Jesus, that we will not lose sight of him, that we will not fall. And it is very important that we understand these principles. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. I think that was the passage that I was looking for before. 2 Peter chapter 1. Verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. We have a sure word, Peter says. What is that sure word? Jesus, brothers and sisters, is that sure word? This is what the apostle is telling us, that Jesus is the sure word of God. We are unto, if you do well, that you take heed. If we take heed to what Christ is showing, what Christ is saying, depending upon him, relying upon him. It says it will do us well. It will be like a light shining in a dark place. There will be no need to be buttoned about. We will have guidance until the day of dawn, it says, and the day of star arise in our hearts. In closing, Jesus asks his disciples, a simple question that brought a serious awareness to their minds. And I trust that the question that he asked them will bring a serious awareness to our minds also. What is the question that Jesus asked his disciples? What is it that brought serious awareness to their minds? Turn with me as we begin to wind down to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22 and verse 35. Luke 22 and verse 35. And he said unto them, When I sent you out without purse and scrip and shoes, lack ye anything? And they said nothing. They answered not a word because they never lacked. Why? Because they had his presence with them. Brothers and sisters, you see where I'm going with this? When the presence of God, when the presence of Christ is with us, there is no need to fear. There is no lack. And David reminds us of this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want or I will not lack. And therefore, we need to understand that the presence of God, the presence of Christ, is all that we need. Having Christ, we have all. Romans 8, 32 says, when God gave Jesus, he gave all. How could he give Christ and not give everything? And brothers and sisters, we have everything, and it seems somehow that we are not aware of it. It seems somehow that is not registering in our minds that Christ is all in all to his people. 
And so therefore then, in closing, let us return now to Psalm 121. Psalm 121, and read the closing verses. Psalm 121, verse 4. It says, Behold, he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. God is the one who is keeping you. And even though you might be challenged with difficulty, trials, or hardship, you are being kept by Christ. And we need to understand this, not looking at our circumstances, but focusing on Christ, not losing sight of Christ. Verse 5. The Lord is thy keeper. Who is your keeper? The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is thy shade. He is your protector. He is your keeper. Verse 7, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. And verse 8, the Lord shall preserve thy going out. David is emphasizing and stressing it is the Lord. He alone. And so he learned a very important lesson. Don't let anything cause him to lose sight of Christ. And my prayer for us, brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, do not allow anything to cause us to lose sight of Christ, especially in this end time, especially in this going down. Many things will want to cause us to lose sight of Christ, but when we lose sight of Christ, we've lost everything. There is no faith, there is no hope. Let us therefore then keep Christ in focus through how? Through the word. He that love me, Jesus says, he will keep my word. And the keeping of the word, which points to Jesus, we have him within our hearts as he begins to reproduce his obedience in our experience. I trust that God will bless you. Continue to strengthen one another with the word of God, not letters, but with the very presence of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen. Gracious Savior and Eternal Father, we thank you for your precious word to our hearts this evening. You said you will not suffer our footsteps to move. And oh, how often, dear Father, we have been slipping, we have been lagging in faith, we have been lacking, and it is not your fault. And we confess this day that it is our faith, it is our fault that we have, don't have faith. And so we pray, dear Lord, that you will cleanse and convert us anew. And cause us now to seek your word. Because faith comes by hearing, walking in obedience to your word. Bless our friends and our family. Bless our neighbors, dear Lord. And may faith through your word, depending upon Jesus, trusting on him and in him, that at the appointed time, he will manifest himself. He will make his presence made known to us. Hear us now from heaven for all these things we ask. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Keep trusting in the word of God. Keep focusing on Christ. Thank you.